hello everyone welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more so we'll be continuing our session on concept of causation so so far we have covered germ theory epidemiological triad multifactorial causation web of causation and iceberg of disease so the remaining portions that is natural history of disease uh, risk factors and spectrum of disease okay so these three topics will be covered from to today's session so let's uh, move on to the natural history of disease so natural history of disease is nothing but suppose what happens when a pathogen enters our body that is before the before the stage that is pre pathogenesis state that is when we are exposed to a place where there are chances of pathogen entry and to a state where the pathogen can cause its full on effect to our body so in definition we can say that a disease evolves over time from the earliest stage of its pre pathogenesis phase to its termination okay so when it has shows its full effect that is this pathogen has shows its full effect it results in either recovery disability or death usually in absence of treatment or prevention we are not doing anything suppose we are not doing anything to prevent that pathogen control of pathogen what will be the cause of this pathogen's action or how do this pathogen react or present in our body so that is natural history of disease usually when pathogen enters the symptoms arise we go to doctor or we take treatment and it will be cured or with maybe some disability will be there so what if we are not doing any prevention or any treatment so it might end up recovery disability or death so that is a natural history of any disease so the process begins like when we are going to a place or when we are at a risk of getting an infection suppose we are going to a slum where the epidemic of cholera is around or in the air i mean uh, the water so we are exposed to or um, this cholera bacteria and we are having a high chance of getting this bacteria through, through water or any other way but we have not yet uh, shown this uh, pathogen entry the way for pathogen entry the pathogen is still outside the body okay so that is pre pathogenesis phase but any moment this pathogen can enter and once it enter it starts the pathogenesis phase because pathogen enters body and it starts replicating and it shows its uh, effect so that is pathogenesis and pre pathogenesis phase so if there is no medical intervention what happens is as i told there will be either disability or death or there will be recovery the body immune system itself shows recovery it will fight against the pathogen and the body will be recovered so what happens is the pathogen exposure we are going in a place where we get exposed pathogen enters the host body it results in disease there is no intervention it may end up either death disability or recovery so this process is known as natural history of disease there is no intervention here okay so usually natural history of disease can be studied in a cohort study so we know cohort study is a prospective or future looking study it studies study starts with a uh, disease free person and it goes and over a future period of time the person develops a disease so the best way to study a natural history of disease is cohort study but since it's we you know it is very laborious uh, and it is costly so mostly it is done by other methods like cross sectional and retrospective like case control study but best way is always cohort study because we can uh, understand that how the disease uh, shows is uh, clear effect because 
when we start the study there is no disease so over the period we will be knowing very clearly how the disease shows its effect but if we are doing a retrospective study the disease has already done its all uh, effect on the people or the particular person so we will be asking questions and trying to find out what would have done so it is not very accurate as we get the information during a cohort study so uh, the physician what physician sees in clinic is just an episode of a natural history of disease so we go to uh, a doctor when we get symptoms when we get fever when we get a headache or when we have a feeling when we feel tiredness uh, fatigue such symptoms we go to the uh, physician or a doctor so that is just part of or just an episode of the natural history of disease so natural history of disease can be studied only by an epidemiologist so a clinician or a doctor cannot study the natural history of disease it should be studied by an epidemiologist how it starts how it goes and what are the uh, symptoms it shows and how it uh, finishes its course by recovery disability or death so we can divide the natural history of disease uh, as pre-pathogenic and pathogenic pre-pathogenic is before the pathogen enters the body but we are at a risk of getting the pathogen once the pathogen enters our body pathogenic phase starts okay so pre-pathogenic says as i mentioned earlier we are at a condition where the disease or the, where the pathogen can enter our body at any time but it is not yet entered okay so that is a pre-pathogenesis phase of many communicable and non-communicable disease communicable disease like cholera food poison we are at a position where any time we can get the pathogen like we are going to a restaurant where the food poison have been reported any moment we get the pathogen we are at a area where the cholera has been reported we get any moment the disease when the pathogen enters our body so that is pre-pathogenesis phase okay because pathogen hasn't entered our body so and exposed to the risk of the disease because there is a risk of disease all these places so we are at a risk of disease but we are not infected with the pathogen so next is pathogenic phase when the pathogen or organism enters our body when this clostridium bottle that is a food poison causing bacteria or vibrio cholerae enters our body the pathogenic phase starts it shows symptoms it can be clinical or subclinical because we know uh, many people with coronavirus it's not showing any symptoms but they are under pathogenic phase we are all now it, since it is a pandemic we are all living in pre-pathogenesis phase because everywhere the risk is present we may get the disease from uh, any person so we are all under pre-pathogenic phase that's only a, a case for such pandemic diseases once it enters it becomes pathogenesis so clinical or subclinical let it be but it is a, a pathogenic phase so the pathogenic phase decides basically the fate of the disease how it ended up with the outcome can be recovery disability or death okay so we can summarize the natural history of disease by this picture this is a cause of this pathogen okay how it shows its effect on our body and these two phases one is pre-pathogenesis phase and this is pathogenesis phase okay so we are living in a area where any time the pathogen can enter our body that is pre-pathogenesis phase we are living in a slum or we are going to a restaurant that is pre-pathogenesis phase this particular organism enters our body the pathogenesis phase starts once it start it might be asymptomatic or it is symptomatic if it is symptomatic we'll go to a doctor or a uh, physician and we'll get it con diagnosed okay so diagnosis can be done only at clinical stage 
asymptomatic uh, stage on diagnosis is very difficult so it may end up death disability or recovery because we are not doing any treatment here this is just a natural history of disease this diagnosis is possible under clinical stage because patient will shows symptoms okay so that is uh, all about natural history of disease how a disease progresses without any medical treatment or any intervention or any prevention how it goes and how it shows its full effect on it as a death disability or recovery so studying natural history of disease is very much important in prevention of disease okay so natural history of disease is over Next is the spectrum of disease. This is almost like mm, our natural history. So it says that it is a graphic representation. So you can see that uh, we know spectrum of color when a light uh, enters the prism, it uh, radiates many colors. Oh, that, that's why we got this name, spectrum of disease. So spectrum of disease, it's a graphic representation of variations in the manifestation of disease. So one disease can present uh, various uh, outcome. Sometimes oh, a particular disease might be asymptomatic in a particular person. It might be symptomatic but very mild stage. Sometimes it will be in a moderate stage. Sometimes the same disease can be very fatal for that next person. So various manifestations are present for the same disease. So that is all about spectrum of disease. A healthy person, a particular disease showing various manifestations. Okay, so at one end, that is this end, the person is having positive health because that particular disease is not showing any problem for that particular uh, that uh, patient. Okay, at one end of the spectrum are subclinical infections. Suppose if we take uh, tuberculosis, many of the Indian population are carriers they are not showing any symptoms still they harbor microorganisms in their body so they are under subclinical infection and uh, they are not having any uh, problems as such because positive health better health and the other end is death the same disease can cause uh, death of a person they are very malnourished they are living in uh, overcrowded uh, slum areas the same disease can cause death of that person okay so at one end it will be positive and better health and the other extreme end it shows as a sim as a death so at one end the spectrum are subclinical infection and the other end it is uh, fatal illness so in the middle it is having uh, illness ranging in severity that is mild to moderate this area will be mild to moderate so spectrum of disease is nothing but a disease manifestations in various people uh, ranging from positive health to death so next we uh, go to iceberg we have already covered next you go to the risk factors risk factors are very much important in the present scenario because all most of the diseases which were present in the past century like cholera uh, that contagious diseases other contagious diseases like uh, smallpox, plague, all are under well controlled because our uh, scientific uh, knowledge and our medical facilities are improved uh, to a very extent that all these contagious diseases can be uh, well controlled. The exceptions are there like uh, corona pandemic. Still, all the contagious diseases can be well controlled. But what happens is the other side of uh, disease that is chronic diseases or lifestyle diseases are on a increasing fashion because uh, due to the change in lifestyle or due to change in the food habit or sedentary lifestyle the people are uh, getting affected with many lifestyle diseases like coronary heart disease diabetes obesity high cholesterol so all these uh, are risk factors we can say because we just cannot say to we know that tuberculosis caused by mycobacterium tuberculae okay in many diseases we cannot say what causes what because in multifactorial and web of causation we have seen how the chronic diseases or lifestyle diseases 
are exposed to. There are many factors which are intricate relationship causing the disease. So risk factors are coming into uh, the limelight in this 21st century or the past uh, 30, 50 years where the lifestyle of people have changed drastically. So risk factors are nothing but an attribute that significantly associated with the development of a disease. Let's take smoking. So this attribute has significantly associated with causing lung cancer. So it can be called as a risk factor. Anything which has a significant effect on producing something, increased probability of causing something is known as risk factor. So it can be modified by intervention reduce the possibility of occurrence so we can do preventive measures we can educate the people and uh, risk factors can be modified uh, and it is always modifiable some risk factors are not modifiable like our genetic makeup our chromosomal abnormalities our immune system such things are not modifiable risk factors but many risk factors like uh, heating practices sedentary lifestyle uh, the smoking alcoholism so such things can be modified and the outcome will be uh, changed so risk factors are suggestive but not absolute proof that is the difference between uh, our germ theory and the recent web of causation germ theory says this bacteria causes this disease but in risk factors we cannot give that much assurance or absolute proof is not possible it can give a suggestive suggestive power only it it can cause this disease smoking can uh, cause uh, lung cancer we cannot say that smoking causes lung cancer because many people with lung cancer uh, smoking might not be a very significant factor because uh, we don't have that much evidence a perfect hundred percentage evidence because most of diseases are due to the web of causation so that is the risk factors. So, so risk factors are many times modifiable and non-modifiable. Non the modifiable are the which is coming in our daily practices and non-modifiable risk factors are also there. So risk factors are commonly associated with our um, lifestyle diseases. So we have covered uh, our most of the concept of causation. So I'll just... Uh, We'll just have a recap so germ theory we covered epidemiological triad multifactorial natural and web of causation these two are coming into our chronic or lifestyle diseases then the natural history of disease how the disease uh, be presented without any intervention and it has pre-pathogenesis and pathogenesis phase i spoke of disease we know what is a tip and what is underwater and spectrum of disease how the spectrum of uh, disease showing from perfect health to death and the risk factors and risk group and risk group we know people who follows risk factors and there will be many risk groups because if we say uh, contagious diseases we, we can uh, say that the slum people or overcrowded people are mostly the risk group for getting that disease people who are under smoking habit is a risk group for lung cancer or other emphysema such diseases so there will be always risk group and age-old people will be risk for uh, schizophrenia Parkinson's disease so risk groups uh, should be taken care of well so this is all about concept of causation so I covered it uh, all the various uh, concepts how the disease is getting uh, disease is caused uh, from the 18th century and prior some diseases theories were there and to the very recent ones so the present uh, present stage we are mostly seeing this risk factors and risk groups risk factors are the main thing and web of causation or multifactorial causation so uh, the next class i'll be covering the prevention of disease the levels of prevention okay so uh, that's all about concept of causation so thank you